It's February and we're surrounded by the hallmarks of an Alberta winter, including the signs of a regular winter visitor. We've all heard or seen them, sudden large flocks of birds mobbing fruit and pine trees, leaving a clear flute-like call and speckles of odd purple droppings in their wake. These are bohemian waxwings. They're an extremely social bird and will often be found in flocks numbering in the hundreds. Their social instincts are so strong that cedar waxwings, a close cousin, have been documented leaving the nest to join a flock that's passing overhead. These waxwings breed in the high boreal forest and then migrate south to Edmonton latitudes where they overwinter, feeding mostly on leftover berries that are still on trees. Most of what they go after is Saskatoon berries or mountain ash berries. A waxwing's diet is overwhelmingly composed of berries. They can eat several hundred in a single day. With this chosen food source comes a rather unusual side effect, though. After gorging themselves on berries, they might be observed behaving a bit abnormally. Maybe they're flying a little odd, or not really responding normally to outside stimuli. Are they sick? Is there some kind of disease affecting them? Well, no. They're drunk. During repeated freeze-thaw cycles like what we've been observing over the last couple of months, the external structure of berries gets compromised, allowing yeasts and other bacteria to get inside, at which point they start rapidly converting the berries' sugar to alcohols. In this inebriated state, they're extremely vulnerable to both predation and accidents. A frequent complaint of Edmonton residents is bohemian waxwings slamming into their windows dozens at a time, often fatally, littering their doorstop with bodies. These are exceptional circumstances, but like most bird window impacts, it's an avoidable tragedy. Birds simply don't understand the concept of windows. There are no rigid reflective objects in nature. So where we see a bunch of trees reflected in a window, a bird sees cover that it can duck into. And so they smash into it at full speed, often shattering skulls or breaking necks. In fact, even discounting a waxwing's drunkenness, window strikes are the number two cause of bird mortality throughout Canada. The organization FLAP estimates annual losses at anywhere between 16 and 42 million. Luckily, a lot of people understand the risks associated with windows and take steps to prevent them. However, those steps have varying levels of effectiveness. The most effective way we've found is to use window markers to draw vertical lines about two or three inches apart across the entire window. It has a minimal impact on your view through it, but it reduces bird impacts by a substantial amount. Other steps you can take to make your window safer are things like putting attractive objects like bird feeders closer to them. This might seem a little paradoxical, but if a bird feeder is right next to a window, a bird that runs into the window doesn't have enough time to build up speed to injure itself. Overall, bird populations in North America are not doing particularly hot, and it's excess mortality like what windows cause that are driving a lot of that. It may not seem like a large difference individually, but it is a non-zero difference. And when you add a bunch of small numbers together, you don't have a small number anymore. <laughs>